Indian genetics prove the Aryan invasion theory. Some Hindu nationalists have created animosity between Dravidians and Indo-Aryan speakers by claiming that politicians in South India are trying to divide India by saying that Dravidian speakers were in India before the Indo-Aryan speaking Hindus. These nationalists claim that genetics proves that Hindu speaking Aryan languages are the original inhabitants of India. This is false. India, as a result of scientific research, has been proven to be an area in which numerous populations have settled in Greater India, and Indo-Aryan speakers only entered India around 1200 and 800 BC. As a result, the Dravidians and Aryans are not one group genetically. Dravidians and Indo-Aryans have different origins and different traditions. Dravidians and Indo-Aryan speakers are Hindus. Although both groups are Hindus, they have different religious practices. The North Indians are very xenophobic, and many have become Hindutva. Hindutva is the term used to name Hindu nationalism. Hindutva is an ideology seeking to establish the hegemony of Hindus and the Hindu way of life over India. Hindutva or Hinduness is a word created by Vesar de Monsarkar in 1923. It is the predominant form of India Hinduism in northern India today. The followers of Hindutva are trying to rewrite history and genetics to make it appear that Indo-Aryans of India have been in India for 75,000 years. The Hindutva teach a lie that South Indians and North Indians have the same genetic ancestry. This has been proven to be a lie by genetics, even though many Hindutva leaders teach that genetics tell a different story. The Hugo Pan-African SNP Consortium, mapping human genetic diversity in Asia, has done much to bring the genetic data for India in line with the archaeological, anthropological, and linguistic data. Ray Excoper argued that coupling the archaeological data with genetic data is a powerful way to infer population migrations. Before the research of the Hugo Pan Asian SNP Consortium, researchers had noted the absence of congruency between Indian population genetics and archaeological research. As a result, research in India population studies are not supported by historical, archaeological, and linguistic evidence. Although they are not supported by historical, archaeological, and linguistic evidence, many geneticists who are Hindutva try to establish a false genetic history of India. The archaeological evidence indicates that the first settlers of India were probably Negritos and Austroasiatic speakers, not Dravidian speakers nor Indo-Aryan speakers. These Negritos and Austroasiatic people expanded from India into Southeast Asia and Greater East Asia. But geneticists maintain that the Dravidian speakers originated in India. These geneticists are mainly Hidutva. They support this view by showing how the Indian metachondrial DNA belonging to M. haplogroup must have developed in Sutu in India. Even though they know that the M. haplogroup is not just, is not native to India and that even many Indians carry haplogroup M1, which is characteristic of Africans' people. Some researchers use Rosenberg et al. to argue that there is a low level of genetic divergence 
across geographically and linguistically diverse Indian populations. Based on their analysis solely of Indo-Aryan and Dravidian speakers from India. This is very, a very interesting study. But the study by the Hugo Pan-Asian Pan SNP Consortium contradicts Rosenberg et al. and supports the view that the Indian populations are not homogenous and that Negritos were probably the first settlers of India. Using an Indian sample from India, the Hugo Pan-Asian SNP Consortium showed that these people were Negritos, not Indo-Aryan speakers. The Hugo Pan-Asian SNP Consortium finding is supported by linguistic and archaeological evidence that indicate that Dravidian, that Dravidian subdratum in the Indo-European languages and is the major reason for the um, Indians carrying, in a sense, or being predominantly of Dravidian origin. Of Dravidian origin. The problem with the Rosenberg et al. story was that Rosenberg used a sample of Indo-Aryan and, and Dravidian speakers in the United States as a representative sample of diverse Indian populations in India. This was not an accurate example of the linguistic and geographical diversity of Indian populations because the most recent common ancestor of the Indo-Aryan and Dravidian speakers in India was probably a Proto-Dravidian speaker because there's a high level of genetic divergence across Indian populations. A shared most recent common ancestor for Dravidian and Indo-Aryan speakers is supported by the Dravidian substratum in Indo-European Indo languages, which indicates that the speakers of these languages lived in intimate contact in North India for thousands of years. These findings were confirmed by Wright et al. Wright et al. claims that the Indian Klein divides Indians into two groups, ancestral North Indians and ancestral South Indians. A and I are related to Western Eurasians and speak Indo-European languages. The ancestral South Indians, on the other hand, speak Dravidian languages. Dr. David Reich wrote in Reconstructing Indian Population History in the journal Nature, volume 461, page 489, and I quote, One, the ancestral North Indians is general, genetically close to Middle Easterners, Central Asians, and Europeans, whereas the others, the ancestral South Indians, is as distinct from ancestral North Indians and East Asians as they are from each other. By introducing methods that can estimate ancestry without accurate ancestral populations, we show that the ancestral North Indian ancestry ranges from 39 to 70% in most Indian groups and is higher in traditionally upper caste and Indo-European speakers. As you can see, there is a division between the Indians of North India and the Indians of South India. This genetic data clearly divides the North and South Indians and supports the out of Aryan invasion theory and the replacement of an original Dravidian speaking people in the North by invading Indo-Aryan speaking Vedic people. The genetic data is supported by archaeological, textual, and linguistic evidence. The Vedic hymns make it clear that the Aryans were illiterate, non-urban, and non-maritime people lacking in political complexity. The Dravidian-speaking people used black and red wear. Some of the Dasas of the Vedic literature were Dravidians. Bibi Lau proved conclusively that the Dravidians were genetically related to the sea group people Nubia, given the fact that both groups used one, a common black red wear, 
a common burial complex incorporating megaliths and circular rock enclosures and a common type of rock cut sepulcher. The use of the black and red ware of Gujarat between 1700 and 1000 BC were in communication with the Dravidians of the Malwa culture. The black and red ware people of the Malwa culture occupied the Tapi Valley, Pravara, Gadawadi, and the Bhima Valleys. According to Dr. Raman, an Indian archaeologist, most of these Indo-Aryans used a type of pottery called plain grayware. The plain grayware phase has been extrapolated back to 1000 BC. During excavations in Haryana and Punjab, dating out the decline of the Arabian civilization, the radial carbon dates for plain grayware are far too late to support an Indo-Aryan hypothesis for the founding of the Indus Valley civilization. Another Indian archaeologist, Joshe, has dated some plain gray ware back to 1300 BC in the Punjab. This suggests that the Indo-Aryan speakers probably entered India in two waves, a peaceful infiltration between 1300 to 1000 BC and a wave of conquest after 1000 BC. This would explain the Vedic discussion of Vedic people attacking walled cities inhabited by the Dasas, or Dravidian speakers. Here we can see some painted grayware used by these ancient Indo-Aryan speaking people. On the Gangetic Plain we see the emergence of the first uses of the plain grayware. It suggests that it was in the Gangetic Plain that we first see the contact between Dravidians and Indo-Aryan speakers. Most Indo-Aryans entered India around 1800 BC. This will explain why almost all the dependable plain grayware dates cluster around 800 to 350 BC. The appearance of the plain grayware documents the beginning of the Indo-Aryan invasion. This shows that there were no Indo-Aryans in India 75,000 years ago. The Indo-Aryans have only been in India since 1200 BC. Yes, 1200 BC, not 75,000 BC. This genetic data clearly divides the North and South Indians and supports the Aryan invasion theory and the replacement of an original Dravidian speaking people in the North by the invading Indo-Aryan speaking Vedic people. The find of heterogeneity in ancient India by Reich et al. and the Hugo Pan Asian SNP consortium is in conformity with the archaeological and linguistic data. This makes the research of the Hugo Pan Asian SNP consortium significant and suggests future studies which will provide keen insight into the ancient human demography in India and the rest of Asia. It is said that Hindutva are teaching that the Dravidians and the Indo-Aryan people should be at odds when science shows that there is no genetic unity between the North Indians and the South Indians. Stop lying, Hindutva. Teach the truth. Here are examples of articles that can give you further information on the divide between the Dravidians and North Indians.